Hello there, Ben Bowers, the Spirit Specialist, and I'm here today to talk to you about the brand new release from the Lindors Abbey Distillery. It came out today at the time I'm recording this, so I'm on a bit of a rush to get this edited and up. Um, it's the uh, Cask of Lindors range. Um, this is the new STR Red Wine Barrique edition. Um, so the Cask of Lindors is essentially a selection of bottlings that highlight the individual components that make up their core bottling. So I do have one bottle left of the first one that came out, which was bourbon cask maturation. This is the second, which is the STR Red Wine Cask. And then the third is, I think, Oloroso, and I think it is just three in there. So, um, before I tell you what this tastes like, let me give you a bit of background information about this relatively new distillery um, that's doing some really cool things. Lindor's Abbey is a Tyronesian monastery built in the late 12th century on the edge of Newburgh, Fife. It's claimed that the first written reference to whiskey being produced in Scotland relates to the Abbey, as the Exchequer Rolls of 1494 list that, by order of King James IV, eight bowls of malt be presented to the monk Friar John Corr to produce aqua vitae. It's thought that Friar Corr resided at Lindor's, and it is more than likely that distilling of some form was taking place well before this date, and as such the Abbey has become known as the spiritual home of Scotch whiskey. Now a ruin, the grounds and a neighbouring farm became to be owned by the Mackenzie Smith family, who held the title of Custodians of Lindors. Drew Mackenzie Smith and his wife Helen had long wanted to build a distillery to honour the historical links to whisky in their grounds, and excavation began in 2013. However, archaeological investigations delayed full construction until 2016, with a visitor centre opening in October 2017 and distillation commencing in December of that year. The water for whisky production is taken from a borehole near the distillery, meaning the water used is from the same source as would have been used at the Abbey. Barley is sourced from the nearby Fife region, and in June 2019, local farms have supplied concerto barley from fields that would have been in Abbey lands. While most new whisky distilleries have produced a gin to provide an ongoing revenue stream while spirit was maturing in cask, Lindor's Abbey instead released an aquavitae based on recipes found at the Abbey. Whereas originally this would have been essentially new make spirit infused with herbs found in the local area, Lindor's Abbey aquavitae uses a blend of herbs and spices including Douglas fir and sweet Sicily along with a maceration of dried fruits. The distillery has one wash still and two spirit stills, which are dubbed sister stills. This allows for experimentation with differing cuts to produce a variety of different flavour profiles. Maturation also takes place with a vast array of cask types, with a combination of ex-bourbon casks, STR or shaved, toasted and recharred wine barrels and Oloroso sherry butts being used for their first release. The Casks of Lindors is an ongoing series highlighting the component parts that make up the core bottling from the distillery. The first release was a whisky matured solely in ex-bourbon barrels, whereas this latest edition has been matured exclusively in shaved, toasted and recharred barrels that previously held Spanish Rioja red wine. STR casks are synonymous with Dr. Jim Swan, a consultant regarded as a legend within the whisky industry who worked with many new distilleries before his untimely death in February 2017. His aim was to help early releases be as flavour forward as possible, but the cost of traditional first fill sherry and bourbon barrels was prohibitive to distilleries still struggling with low budgets at an early stage. Red wine barrels were much cheaper, but filling straight away with new make spirit produced a harsh profile thanks to the tannin elements in the wood that would provide a somewhat drying effect. However, these tannins were found closer to the edge of the stave, so by shaving, toasting and recharring the inside of the cask, the more fruity notes can then be accessed, resulting in a flavour forward young whisky with lower costs. The Casks of Lindor's STR Wine Barriques is a limited edition bottled at a chosen strength of 49.4% ABV with no chill filtration taking place and no colour added. Okay, so I never got round to doing a review video for the bourbon cask. Um, I got sent some samples, two of these miniatures, um, from uh, the sales manager. One of two things happened with the bourbon. Either I didn't get sent a sample of it or I've lost it. Um, now I've looked through all of my miniatures out in the back of the shop and I can't find anything anywhere and I never did a video of it so I don't quite know what's happened with that. Um, but I am quite tempted, I literally have the one bottle of um, bourbon cask left. I am tempted to potentially put that aside with one of the STRs, wait for the Oloroso to come out and actually do some kind of tasting event where we can look at the individual components and then finish off with the core bottling and see if I can get maybe something else off them as well to kind of make it an extra special tasting. But this is the STR. So straight away, 
you can instantly see just in terms of the color between the two. No color added, no chill filtration, all of that lot. Bourbon cask, red wine cask, it's pretty obvious which is which. So I can't do a side by side, unfortunately, um, because I don't have the sample stock of the bourbon, but in terms of the STR. So as you would have heard, STR synonymous with Jim Swan, who worked with so many new distilleries. And it's a really, really clever technique to be able to use casks that otherwise kind of previously were ignored, but they do introduce a very, very fruity flavor. It really introduces kind of like, it's not quite as deep as port cask maturation, but you do get lovely red berry fruity notes through it as well. And there is kind of like a touch of spiciness in there. Vast majority tend to be Rioja red wine casks, but the theory is that you could do it with other red wine casks. Rioja is a little bit of a softer red wine, you know, Cabernet Sauvignon, Shiraz, that sort of thing. They're still going to be quite beefy. They're still going to be quite intense. Whereas Rioja has that, those berry notes. It's a little softer. You tend to get like a warm, oaky feel through a Rioja wine as well. So it does seem to partner better with whiskey than other red wine casks. Pinot Noir may be, but I get the impression that Pinot Noir barrels can be quite expensive. Um, obviously, Rioja, there's a lot of Rioja produced in Spain. So therefore there are a lot of casts available for new distilleries, young distilleries that are working to tight budgets can actually source these casks, use this STR process and be able to get some absolutely fantastic whiskies from very, very early days in their progression of maturation. So on the nose, straight away there is a real nice, not zingy, but there is a juicy red berry note to it almost straight off the bat. Reminds me very much of strawberries, but like really, really fresh strawberries, like freshly, freshly picked strawberries. There's a little hint of cherry on there. There's a slight note of sweet spice too. There's just a little bit of a sweet cinnamon. There is a nice freshness to it. It feels light. It knows is very, very light. And like I say, it's that really freshly picked um, strawberry, freshly picked raspberries. It's, it's not quite as zingy as raspberries, but it's kind of there. It's, it's, it's a summer fruit feel, touch of black currant, touch of um, blackberries in there. But it's, it's light, it's inviting, it's, it's very spring-like, absolutely. But there is just an underlying touch of just a gentle waft of spice coming through there as well. And again, there's a nice kind of like uh, fields in springtime feel to it. A bit like Lockley, a bit like um, Daft Mill, those sorts of feel, feel of um, those feels, that's not even a word, th those feelings even of being in the countryside with growing fields of hay in the sun. But you do get that kind of red fruit note to it as well. It's incredibly inviting. And on the palate, it initially starts off like that. Very juicy, very juicy to start with. What was strawberries on the nose really does turn into very, very fresh raspberries. You get a slight creaminess in there as well. Not quite kind of a, oh, is there actually some bourbon cask in this? Because I know that this is purely STR casks. But the berry notes are softened slightly with a slight, it's, it's not quite eat and mess. You don't get that meringue sweetness. But there is a bit of a strawberries and raspberries and cream and just like lightly whipped cream in there. There's a good mouthfeel to it. And the ABV on it, now this is the same as with the bourbon. So I think the 49.4 is one of those where it will be across this range. That's their chosen strength for the, I think it's three bottlings in it. The bottlings that are coming out as part of this series. And it it's just, just high enough without being too high. If this was closer to 50, which I know there's not a lot in it, it's literally 0.6%, but if this was 50 or above, the alcohol would be too overpowering. I'm reluctant to put water in it. I'm not going to, for two reasons. One, I think it's delicate that water's actually gonna knock it down a little bit too much. There's a fly, buzz off, literally. And two, I don't actually have my water and pipette with me and I can't be bothered to go and get it. But I think it's just about bang on just about because i do like the the heat that is coming through it's adding to the spiciness that's on the background it's lengthening the finish my overriding um kind of feel of this in terms of flavor profile is absolutely very 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 freshly picked strawberries and 
a kind of a very lightly whipped double cream. That's what I'm getting, it's a strawberries and cream feel. And then there's just a little bit of spice, maybe kind of almost like um, it's strawberries and cream that have studded with like chunks of shortbread. There is a slight biscuity note in there as well, more in the background. And then the ABV, the alcohol in there is lengthening everything. It's drawing out that fish and I can, I can still taste that fruitiness. It's very, very spring and summer whiskey, absolutely. Hmm. It's really fruity, but you do get, there's a touch of honey in there. Yeah, a, a little touch of kind of like runny honey. I'm almost getting a little bit of salt now, but I think that's the alcohol level. So it's starting to evolve on the palate. We still get lots of fruit, but you're starting to get a bit more of that oak influence coming through now. It's starting to warm everything down. The finish really does linger, um, and it sits around the mouth. The mouthfeel, mouthfeel bizarrely is light, but actually quite thick and unctuous at the same time. It feels light when you've got the liquid in your mouth, but it lingers afterwards and it feels like it's coating your mouth and that's what's drawing that finish along. It's a mightily impressive jam. It's not for everybody. I absolutely accept that. I think it's gonna to be too light for some people. It's gonna to be too light and fruity. It arguably is quite a lot of high notes and you could say that there is not a lot of like low notes, but then that's where the skill comes in with blending that with your bourbon for your vanilla notes, with your Oloroso sherry for your deeper, richer fruity notes to then end up getting the core bottling. But I really, really like this on its own as a summer's day whiskey. You know, there will be people that will call it breakfast whiskey because light whiskeys are breakfast whiskeys. But I love the fruity notes that are in it. And, and you can absolutely tell it's got that red wine cask influence. It is fantastic. So it is available uh, through the website, www.spiritspecialist.com. Um, I don't know what I'm doing with my last bottle of the bourbon. I am going to speak to uh, the sales manager of uh, Lindor's uh, and see if they've got something else coming out that I potentially could put all of them on a tasting or maybe in a selection box. So that bourbon might not be available, but I do have stock. It has literally launched today. Friday the 22nd of April is launch day for this. So it's on the shelf, it's ready to go. If you wanted to buy a bottle, jump on the website. If I've got stock, it's yours. So that's me done. I'll see you at the next video. Cheers.